it's my um, great pleasure to introduce our next speaker, Pierre-Guy Plamondon from the University um, of Versailles St. Quentin, who will talk on the category of projective presentations. Thank you very much for the introduction. Thank you for the invitation to take part in this uh, delightful online conference. I'm very happy to be here. Um, now, uh, what I want to talk about is a category that is very linked to the module category of an algebra, um, the category of projective presentations, or if you prefer two term complexes of projectives. Uh, let's dive straight into it. Uh, what is my setting today? K is an algebraically closed field. And lambda is a basic finite dimensional K algebra. I don't think uh, K needs to be algebraically closed, but since I'll be talking about a lot of results, this seems to be the greatest common divisor for all the results that are in the literature. So I'm not taking any chances. Now, mod lambda is a category of finite dimensional lambda modules, right modules or left module, it doesn't matter today. And uh, proj lambda is the full subcategory of finitely generated projective modules, which we will need for the next definition. Now, here's one fact about modules. They have projective resolutions. Now, if you truncate that projective resolution after the second term, you get what's called the projective presentation. Okay, so P minus one goes to P zero by morphism F, goes to M, goes to zero. That's an exact sequence. Uh, a two-term complex of projectives or a projective presentation is just exactly that when you forget about the module M. So it's just a morphism between two projective modules. Uh, now, they are objects in a category, which I denote by K interval minus one zero proj of lambda. Uh, interval minus one zero uh, is supposed to tell you that uh, your projectives that you're keeping in the projective resolutions are P minus one and P zero. And I like to use this notation because I think someday maybe I'd like to extend it, yes, to maybe k minus m zero cross lambda, who knows. Uh, now, uh, this category I see as a full subcategory of a triangulated category, the homotopy category of bounded complexes of projectives over lambda. How do you see this inclusion where you just look at the projective presentation and you can see that it's just a, com a complex of projectives where everybody is zero except two terms, yes. So that's the inclusion. It's a full subcategory of a triangulated category. So it inherits a lot of its properties. So let's talk about some facts about this category. First thing, it's extriangulated in the sense of Nakaoka and Pali. That's just because it's a full extension closed subcategory of a triangulated category. So if you don't know what extriangulated means, just think full extension closed subcategory of a triangulated category. That's all we need. Okay, good. Uh, with this extriangulated structure, it has enough projective objects. These are just the projectives, concentrate degree zero, and also enough injective objects. These are the shifted projectives or the projectives concentrate degree minus one. Uh, it has global dimension at most one. Everyone has projective dimension at most one in there. It also has dominant dimension at least one, which has led uh, Gorski, Nakaoka, and Palu to call these categories zero Auslander in a preprint that will very soon appear on the archive. Check it out. Uh, now, uh, I said earlier, maybe you'd like to do not two term complexes, but maybe you know, n plus one term complexes of predictives. You could do that. That slide would still be true. You just have to shift some of the numbers. That's fine. Uh, but most of what follows maybe is not true. Maybe you have to change it. I don't know. So I'm, I'm going to stick to two term complexes of projectives. Uh, one more thing I want to say about this category is that it has Auslanderaten theory uh, or Auslanderaten said duality in the sense of a Yamanakaoka and Palu. In particular, it has aus almost split conflations or Auslanderaten conflations. It has an Auslanderaten quiver, which you might like to try and draw. And if you want to do this, one thing that is useful to know is that. This category of projective presentations looks a lot like the module category in the sense that, well, there's a, an obvious functor from one to the other. Yes, you have a projective presentation, take H0, cohomology in degree zero, you get a module. That functor is full, it's dense, and we know the kernel. The kernel is just all morphism factoring through an injective object, a shifted projective. Okay, so the theme of my talk is that these two categories the category of projective presentations, K minus one zero proj, and the category of modules kind of live on both sides of a looking glass. And you might want to cross that looking glass from one side to the other. Well, when you do that, things become strange. Small things become large, large things become small, left things becomes right, and so on. 
Yes. So let's try and see why this is the case. So on this slide, I will put the module category on the bottom and the category of projective presentations on top. And in between is a looking pass. So I will try and see how, by, by looking at only three classes of objects on both sides, see how you can try and cross this looking class. These are objects that we've seen before, even today in this very conference. For instance, in the module category, you can, you, you can be interested in tail tilting theory. So you, you're interested in support tail tilting modules, for instance. Well, if you know about this theory from its inception, it, it has been known that you can go through the looking glass and you get two-term silting objects. Yes. There's a bijection between two-term silting objects and support tail tilting modules. This bijection is just the functor H0 we've seen before. So that's one thing. Uh, another thing you can look at, and we've seen those before today as well, you can look at torsion classes or torsion pairs inside the module category. Torsion classes form a nice lattice for the inclusion, the very nice object to study. And it has also been known since the start of tail tilting theory that if you restrict to functorially finite ones, they're in bijection with support tail tilting modules. Now, can you go through the looking glass if you start from torsion classes? The answer is yes, you get cotorsion pairs. Functorially finite torsion classes are in bijection with complete cotorsion pairs. I'm not gonna define complete, just know that you have to add this little adjective there for the bijection to work, <laughs> but you have this. Uh, now, you almost have a commutative square on this slide. Seems a shame. You can turn it into one using work of Adachi and Tsukamoto. You have a bijection between bounded hereditary cotorsion pairs and two term silting objects. Very good. Uh, now I'd like to talk about the third uh, class of objects, uh, which has appeared or already today wide subcategories of the module category. So a wide subcategory is a, uh, an abelian subcategory of mod lambda. It's a subcategory that's closed under extension, kernels, and co kernels. Now, we know that functorially finite wide subcategories are in bijection with functorially finite torsion classes. I should emphasize that each of these double arrows is explicit. Yes, you, you have an explicit map in one direction, an explicit map in the other, and we know that they are inverse to each other. Yes. Now, from wide subcategories, you might want to go through the looking glass. So let's try to do that. If you do this, I claim that what you get are thick subcategories. A thick subcategory of an extrangulated category is a subcategory that is closed under extension, under cones and co-cones. Or if you prefer, uh, it's such that the conflations satisfy the two out of three property. If you have a conflations and two of its objects are in the thick subcategory, then so is the third. Uh, now, in her... Uh, PhD thesis in the, in the work in preparation, Monica Garcia has proved that there is an injection, explicit injection from bounded hereditary cotorsion pairs to thick subcategories. And if you restrict to the image of this map beta, you get uh, a commutative square on the left with explicit bijections. Now, as I said, if you start from the, the looking glass deforms things, yes, if you start from a, from a very large thick subcategory and you go through the looking glass, you will get a very small wide subcategory, the kind of orthogonal to each other in a certain sense. Uh, now, this, this slide is, is getting crowded, but if you wanted, you could, you could fill it with lots of things, which I don't have time to talk about. You could talk about weak cotorsion pairs, T structures, co T structures. You could add, you, you, uh, and the list of people that have worked on this uh, wouldn't even fit the slide if I only listed the names. So I'm not going to even try to do this. So I think it's a worthwhile thing to do if you're looking at things in the module category or the category of projective presentations to always try and remember what happens if you try to go through the looking glass. Do you have explicit bijections and so on. Now there's at least one result that I couldn't fit on this slide with the looking glass. And it's a result about growth in big groups that I would like to talk about as well. Uh, so we have this nice functor between the category of projective presentations and the category of modules. These two categories have growth in big groups, yes, but unfortunately, uh, the functor H0 doesn't send conflations to short exact sequences, only to exact sequences. So, so uh, this functor does not uh, induce a morphism of abelian groups between the growth in D groups. Nevertheless, uh, one can 
prove the following. So this is a classical result from the 1980s for the module category. And this is something that we could prove for the category of projective presentations and more general extrangulated categories of Padrol, Palu, and Pilot. Uh, lambda is representation finite if and only if the relations in the growth and D group are generated by the almost split sequences or conflations, depending on which category you're looking at. Uh, the statement is the same. The proof is almost the same, but importantly, one result doesn't generalize the other. So I'm not sure yet whether they live on both sides of the looking glass or if there's a more general statement that would get both at once. That's the end of my talk. Thank you very much. <laughs>